Today we're going to make a dish called Fayna. It is a wonderful gluten-free substitute for bread or a pizza crust. It can actually be used in hundreds of different ways. Get creative, but very simple to do. Take three quarter cup of water and one cup of garbanzo flour. Whisk it. I'm making a very small batch here because I have a small cast iron pan that I'm going to be baking it in. But uh, you can double this or triple it depending on the size of your pan and your family. All right, so this is what it looks like. Very runny batter. Now, traditionally, this is left off to the side to sit for about two hours. But you really don't need to, to let it sit that long. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that you can put the spices in now or you can put them in later. It really doesn't matter. So there's about a half a teaspoon of pink sea salt here half a teaspoon of black pepper and a full teaspoon of chopped rosemary. This is kind of the basic start. You can add almost any other spices that grab you. You could add some garlic, you could add thyme, you could uh, add any, anything that you would uh, normally put in Italian food would go great here. Or if you're going to use this as the base for something sweet, you might want to leave out some of these spices. So we're just going to throw it in now, for simplicity's sake. I found that letting it sit for 30 minutes or an hour is plenty. But letting it sit for two hours won't hurt it. You can see it's already getting a little bit thicker and smoother now as the garbanzo flour gets better hydrated. So we're just going to stick this off to the side. We're going to Warm up the oven here to 400 degrees and warm up a tablespoon of avocado oil. Now traditional here in the Rio de la Plata, which is the 140 mile wide river that separates Argentina and Uruguay, uh, you would use olive oil, but uh, because we're heating this to a very high temperature, I use avocado oil, which you can heat to 500 degrees and you're going to wait until this is hot enough that the oil starts to smoke a little bit and then you'll pour, we'll, we'll pour the batter in. Okay, I'm seeing a little smoke start to start to rise off there. Okay, put the batter in. And you're, what you're going for, as far as amount of batter, is you want your fine knot to be about a half an inch thick. Now, in the traditional recipe, most um, Uruguayans would uh, put some olive oil in the batter as well, but I'm making my version a bit lower in fat for those of you who pursue a lower fat diet. This diet, this would work just fine with a gluten-free diet, vegan, vegetarian, and I guess uh, for those paleo people who do eat beans, <laughs> this would work. So I'm waiting until it sizzles for just about a minute or two so that you get a nice crispy crust on the bottom and sides. Maybe get it a little bit brown and then I'm going to pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes until it's set all the way through. You use the traditional way of figuring out if it's uh, cooked by just putting a toothpick or something sharp in the middle 
of it and seeing if it comes out clean. And if it does, it's it's ready. Okay, I don't, can you get in here and show that right around the edges it's starting to look a little dry? And generally it'll be nice and brown on the bottom by the time it looks dry like that. So I'm going to turn this off and stick this in the oven to finish up. See you back in 15 minutes. So let's see how it turned out. Yes, you can use a toothpick, but I can tell just by touching it, it's done. For those of you who aren't vegan or dairy-free, I often sprinkle a little Parmesan over the top while it's still hot and it melts into it a bit. You can also put sauce of any sort on it and anything that you would put on a pizza, spare game. Okay. Generally, you let this rest for about 10 minutes before you take it out of the pan. But because I use so little oil, I'm taking it out sooner rather than later. Because it tends to stick otherwise. About the right size for a personal pan pizza. Now it's true you can use any kind of pan that you can put on both the burner and throw into the oven to do this. The reason I like cast iron, it gives you a really nice brown, crunchy finish on the bottom and on the sides that you don't get with a glass pan. Enjoy! <laughs>